Hello, welcome to the, the next in our series of short videos looking at the economics of contestable markets. A lot of students in exams um, make a mistake. Uh, they think when they're talking about contestable markets, they're actually needing to refer to perfect competition. So let's spend a couple of minutes thinking about the contrast between a contestable market and a perfectly competitive market. Lots of ways we could make a contrast, but here's a nice simple way of doing it. So in perfect competition, which you may have studied as part of your course, there are many firms, the concentration ratio is low. So many firms, in fact, no one firm has any significant power over the market. Part of the issue is that they're all producing homogenous or standardized products. The goods and services are essentially the same. Yes, there's free entry and exit into the market. So there are no barriers or exit costs. Um, but because each firm is uh, producing a tiny percentage of the market and each firm is producing a perfect substitute to the other products, no one firm has any pricing power. In fact, we say that each firm is a price taker where average revenue equals marginal revenue. Now, a contestable market is different. It's really quite important you understand some of the differences. There are no set, so there is no set number of suppliers. You could have just a few firms, even one firm, in a contestable market, which sounds slightly counterintuitive. You see, the key is whether there is actual and potential competition in the market. So there's no unique, simple number of firms that, that can operate. Any number of firms in the market. Crucially, each firm is likely and will, in fact, be selling differentiated products or heterogeneous products. There will be subtle differences in quality and design and performance and what have you. And in fact, that's a key part of competition as you try to enter the market to differentiate yourself from your competitors. Uh, one of the um, similarities is there are no entry barriers into the market and crucially, in a contestable market that there are no exit costs. We make the assumption of no sunk costs. Those are costs that you have to pay if you leave the market. Now, because firms are selling differentiated products, they will face a downward sloping demand curve, average revenue curve, and therefore they have some pricing power. They can set their own prices. However, the key point, key revision point for the exam, is that in a, in a contestable market, that pricing power is influenced by both the actual competition that exists, existing firms competing for market share, but also by the threat of competition, particularly if there's hit and run competition, which is where new firms might test the water, try and break into a market, perhaps on a short term basis to see if they can take some of the profits by taking market share. So contestable markets are different. They are different to perfect competition. Well, what can help make a market more contestable? Uh, what can increase the degree of contestability? Let me pick out for you, I mean, there's lots of reasons, but maybe four points to help your revision. The first key factor is if there is a change in the kind of legal structure of the market, in particular, if some of the legal or statutory barriers to entry come down. So, for example, in a market, there could be some patent protection for existing firms, but the length of that patent is shortened, which means the patent becomes generic after a number of years and, and firms are free to, to copy a particular patented idea once the, uh, the, the, the initial, the original patent has moved out. Another good example of this is when a regulator or the government decides to increase the number of operating licenses. You see, in many markets, you need a license to supply, a license to operate. And if there are more licenses given out, that, in theory, uh, can increase contestability. A couple of examples on the East Coast line in the UK, train line running from London all the way up to north of Scotland. LNER, London and North East Railway, actually technically has a monopoly on the vast majority of services on that line. But the market is contestable, to a degree, because Grand Central is also given an access operating license. They can fill in some of the gaps in the timetable to provide uh, some competing train operating services. I've used Grand Central quite a bit over the years. Fairly cheap tickets, good service. Uh, often they, they provide those little off-peak services that, uh, that fill gaps in the timetable. They make the market more contestable. The parcel delivery company uh, market 
is absolutely much more contestable than it was 15, 20 years ago when I was doing economics at university. Loads of suppliers coming in there. DPD, DHL, FedEx, UPS, all kinds of big, giant companies, actually, these huge firms. Uh, Parcel Force, of course, the initial Royal Mail company that had the monopoly, and loads of smaller firms as well. Parcel delivery, there's a lot of price and non-price competition in that market. It's, and that Because the, the market's been deregulated and more people have a licence to operate. And banking is probably a good example. It's still an oligopoly. The big banks, NatWest, Barclays, all those kind of people, they dominate the market. But many of you will have an online-only account, maybe a Monzo account or an Atom account or maybe a Metro Bank account. So Monzo has done pretty well in terms of breaking into the market. They're seen as a challenger to the threat of oligopoly power of the big established banks. Second factor that can make a market become more contestable is the emergence of and adaptation of new technologies. Great examples would be e-commerce platforms. Amazon Web Services, for example, allows many more small businesses to operate an e-commerce platform. Uh, digital technologies uh, mean that innovative firms can scale pretty quickly and gain some traction in the market. Think about the market for food deliveries, for example, which is now much more contestable than it once was. So new technologies can make a big difference. A key macro point is that trade agreements between countries can also make competition more intense. So countries might agree a free trade deal where tariffs come down or where quotas, import quotas, are scrapped. Opening up a market to trade makes a market more contestable. Uh, that, would, by, by the way, that would be a great macro point to put in a micro, micro essay. And let's not forget entrepreneurial zeal. The passion, the energy, the ideas of entrepreneurs, often disruptive entrepreneurs looking to break the existing business models, challenge the status quo, um, a sort of creative destruction in action. Entrepreneurial zeal can make a big difference. One of my favourite businesses is Brewdog. If you've been watching my videos on YouTube, you'll know I'm a big fan of Brewdog. They've actually grown to a pretty hefty size now. They're well-backed and well-financed. But they were initially a, 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 a sort of a, a key challenger and annoyance in many ways to the huge multinational industrial beer companies. And Brewdog have done pretty well. And in the kind of areas, things like fashion, sports fashion, Gymshark, Ben Francis has done particularly well, a former Aston University student. His, uh, you may well have come across Jimmy Shark. Uh, they're trying to break into that kind of, they're trying to, I think they're trying to become the Nike or the Adidas of, of the UK. And they've just been valued at well over one and a half billion dollars. Well, means, that means they're a unicorn company. And Jim Shark is a great example of a brand that's made, made good strides to become more competitive and more, make the market more contestable. When you have high barriers to entry, when the barriers to entry and exit costs are high, then a market becomes less contestable. And we've got a separate video on barriers to entry, which you can have a look at. However, if you lower the entry barriers, the market becomes more contestable. OK, so deregulation we've referred to, opening up a market with more people with a license to, to sell. And we've also mentioned trade barriers coming down, such as eliminating quotas. Um, if you can reverse those trade barriers, that can make a market more contestable. Now, what we'll do in the next video is going to be a theory video. We're going to have a diagram to work through and we're going to be asking the question, well, how do firms price? How do they actually compete? What might be the outcomes in a contestable market?